Hey everybody, it's LT with Power Nation. And like a lot of you guys, we're practicing social distancing to try to prevent the spread of this virus and keep everybody safe. So the bosses sent me a selfie stick and they said, get to work from home. Now I've already binged watched all the latest and greatest Netflix documentaries about those tigers, so that means it's time to get some actual work done. Now the good thing is, and you guys who have your own home projects know this, is UPS, FedEx, and the mail service, they're all still fully operational, which means all your parts can get shipped directly to the house. You don't need to go to town to pick anything up. The bad news about that is, well, you gotta make sure you intercept those packages before anybody else in your household finds out about how much money you're spending on your projects. But the other thing about being home that's not so great is, well, the people who live with you, your significant other, they know exactly how you're spending your time, so you can't really put off any of the projects that you have on your to-do list. Now, I've got a shift kit that I can put in one truck and a custom exhaust that I need to build for another. But unfortunately, I've got a couple of chores that I need to get finished up first, so you guys are coming along for the ride. This is my wife's 2009 BMW X5, and it has just over 70,000 miles on it. It's been a great car, but the one thing that wears out around those miles happens to be the brakes. Now, the fronts were basically 100% shot. They were down to the metal on the pads, so I took care of those about 1,000 miles ago. Back brakes, they don't work quite as hard as the fronts, but these are still almost worn out. So I figured this was a perfect opportunity to replace them and the parts just came in. So today we're gonna to start by doing a basic brake job on the rear of this SUV. Just because we're under a national lockdown doesn't mean you can skip on any of the safety steps when you're working at home. So once the car is jacked up in the air, the first thing I gotta do is find a spot to hold it up there with a jack stand. Then the tires can come off followed by the brake caliper, the pads, not completely worn out, but certainly not a ton of life left, the brake caliper bracket, and finally the rotor, which is held on by a small Allen head screw. Now, so far this job is going quite simply because it's basic r, &R work. The old parts come off and the new parts go right back on. Now, I will admit I did have to cheat on one of the fasteners, and that's the bolt that holds the caliper bracket onto the spindle. This uses an E, or an inverted Torx style of bolt, and as you can see, it's a six-sided star-shaped fastener. Now, I do have a kit that has some E-style sockets in it, but the biggest one I have goes up to an E, let's see, this is 16, and I believe this is an 18 or a 20. However, I do have a 14 millimeter 12 point socket, and it's not ideal, but it actually is a pretty close fit that'll get the bolts off without stripping them out. Now, if I didn't have this, I'd probably have to go to the local parts store and grab another socket, but at least this way I can stay home. So now we're at the point where I hope the new parts that I ordered are actually gonna fit so I can put this car back together. Once I have everything out of the box, I know it's going to fit. So the very first thing that I need to do is clean the oil off the surface of the rotor. They put it on there to prevent rusting during storage and shipping, but it will contaminate your brakes. Once the rotor's in place, the caliper bracket goes on, and then I'll use a big C-clamp to compress the pistons in the caliper all the way back to their home or all the way in position. Then the brake pads go on, followed by the caliper itself. And finally, I can slip in the brake pad wear sensor back into the brake pad, and then finally, the outer retaining clip holds everything in place. Now from here, all I've got to do is put the wheel on and get this thing out of here. But there's a few things you want to consider when you do a brake job. Number one, the very first time you pump the brakes in this car, or any car for that matter, you want to hit them a couple of times before you go to drive off. And that's because the piston and the caliper is quite a ways away from the pad because, well, we moved everything far away enough to get the brakes on. So the first time you hit the pedal, it's gonna go all the way to the floor until all the pistons get kind of pushed back out to their normal stopping point. So just do that before you try to drive the car because if you've got something behind you or in front of you and you don't know, well, you're gonna bump into it. Number two, I got anti-seize compound on the end of this brush and I kind of treat this stuff like that Frank's Red Hot sauce. I put it on everything. Now, I think it's especially important on the threads of a wheel bolt or a wheel stud because you want those things to come on and off. And that's especially important on a car that uses wheel bolts because the threads for the flange are quite a ways back in there and you basically want these things to go in and out 
without any trouble. You don't want anything to rust together. Now, you don't want to put any on the tapered seat of the lug nut. Try to keep that dry. Basically, just apply it to the threads and you'll be good to go. So for me, all I've got to do is get the tire back on this thing, do the far side, and my chores for the day are done.